So the big question is this, how do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyben and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. And now for the review of the day. All right. I got a five-star review from B Harlow. B it looks like B Harlow 12. Uh, five stars. Uh, wow, this is amazing. Pet is a mega rock star agent in his own right. He knows the real estate industry inside out. Pat asks the right questions and exposes the true secrets to success in the real estate industry. I highly recommend this podcast to any and all aspiring agents. Thank you, B. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one-star review if you want or a five-star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please, subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. Rockstar Nation, thanks so much for listening. Don't forget to stay to the end where our guests will be offering a free gift. As you know, all of our guests offer a free gift and all of these gifts can be found on the Agent Success Toolbox. You could find that by going to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or simply texting the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox to 444-999. I am going to put today's free gift in today's show notes but if you want all of them including gifts from most of our guests that have come on the show just go to the agent success toolbox all right rockstar nation uh we have a great guest today mr jeffrey abroger is on the line from huntington beach cali and we're going to get deep into some serious stuff, guys, about follow-up. You all know that follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. You're probably sick to your blue in the face of hearing follow-up. But this guy's an expert when it comes to follow-up. And there's going to be some stuff said today that you have not heard before. I guarantee you that. So without further ado, let's uh, dig into it. Jeffrey, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Thank you. Great to be on here, Pat. We really appreciate it. Hey, buddy, why don't you kind of tell everybody a little bit of who you are, that sort of thing, so they get to know you better. Yes, sure thing. So my name is Jeffrey Broger, and I'm the founder of a company named Steezy Digital. Steezy means style with ease, and that is a surf skate term for my hometown, California. I'm from San Diego. So really, right out of high school, I was recruited for a direct sales commission-only position. And some of you might know the company. It's the knife thing, right? Cutco Cutlery. It's a company that's been around for 70 years and most reps last two weeks. Mm. But for me, I was paying for school myself. I, I went to college and I had to pay for it myself. So I worked super hard. They told me to sit down, make 100 phone calls. And I did. And even though the average rep lasted two weeks, I ended up staying for six years, not only in the sales capacity, but also quickly went into the sales manager capacity. So unlike most 19 and 20 year olds, during spring break and summer, I would drive home to California for my university and recruit as well as manage and train an active sales team of 80 reps. And so early in life, I was going to personal development conferences. I was learning classic sales process from a company that's been around for quite some time. And through that, I was able to build a lot of great habits and work ethic, but also being younger, being a millennial, I also saw the, the potential for improving some of the processes that weren't as efficient and maybe aren't as fun as closing that customer, right? Because mm -hmm. so much of sales is the tedious, consistent details. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's talk about modern day, like, right? So now you run this company, Steezy, and tell me about Steezy real quick, and then we'll, we'll talk about it at the end as well. Absolutely. So... 
Steezy Digital really started as a marketing agency. And what we were doing is helping top 1% real estate brokers to generate more sales conversations, generate more leads and nurture more leads from social media. I realized a inherent problem in the market where a lot of older real estate brokers who were 50 years and older, they've been doing real estate for maybe 15, 20, 25 years. They had a great local referral market. They had a lot of presence, but they struggled with the digital stuff. So we were able to come in and combine both of our knowledge. I admitted that, hey, I don't, I know some of the sales process. I've done this for a while, but I don't know the exact ins and outs of real estate. So they helped to teach me as the founder, the real estate sales process from, you know, it just is like they were recruiting a new realtor. They're going to indoctrinate them to their way. So I got really valuable insight there, but I also was able to bring to the table tons of marketing and technology automation, um, the ability to follow up automatically um, using systems that are five times more effective than email for follow-up. And so when we combined the two, we created a really cool system. And so that's what really the Steezy Digital um, was all about and still is. And, and, and what kind of track record have you had? Yeah, so uh, just one of the case studies that was, it was published on a, a third-party blog, they, they covered a case study where we get, received a 12 times return on ad spend for one of our real estate broker clients. So to put that in perspective and tell a little bit more of the story, one of the top brokers out in Las Vegas um, he is awesome. He's doing like 80 million a year in real estate in Vegas where the average home price is 290. And he was interested in this, but he was a little apprehensive. So he's like, you know, I'll give it a shot. I'm already spending like 40 to 60 grand a month in advertising. What's a little bit more. So um, along with the monthly management retainer, he gave us $600 a month to spend in ads which is small. And when you say $600 a month to spend in ads, what are you spending it on? What type of ads? Yes, Facebook ads. So we, that's the media budget. Okay, right. Got it. So we used every bit of that. Like we, we milked it as much as we could. And the real, I think, inherent value of what we were doing was in the follow-up because we had built out an entire lead nurture and follow-up system prior to ever launching the first ad. So just know that that was in place. And so... What happened is over the six month period of time, I sent every lead instantly to a CRM, but I also sent it to my own Google sheet, which created this bank of all these leads I had given him because I wanted to track it. And so at the end of the six months, what I did, he spent $3,600 total, right? $600 times six months. I went and asked his assistant to send me all of the closings over the last six months. And I personally, as the founder of the company, wanting to track this campaign, I went through and cross-referenced and searched every close, the first name and last name uh, and of the husband and wife, and cross-referenced it with this master lead bank. And it turned out that five of the leads that we sent him over that time actually converted into a real estate sale. And it averaged 1.45 million in real estate. And that resulted in 43,000 in GCI. So yeah. he spent- And that's for, that's for 600 a month. Um, yeah. And that's a, that's a great return because it was, you know, the average, you know, you can fit, you could do the math, but uh, that's, uh, I think all agents would like that. So, so uh, first of all, let's talk about this. I want agents at home to be able to do this. So if you could share this with them, and I also want agents at home to learn kind of what not to do, what to do, not only with ads that you might buy but and, and follow up on, but with follow up in general that you're not buying, right? So yes. first of all, let's start with that. Let's start with just regular old agent leads, people that you know. Mm. Uh, let's talk about the do's and don'ts of follow up. What can you tell us? Absolutely. So some of the do's right when you initiate a relationship with somebody, I would recommend to go the extra mile and not just hand them a business card or not only add them as a contact in your phone. Also for free, go add them as a friend on Facebook, 
add them on LinkedIn, add them on multiple social media. Add channels. them everywhere. Add them yes. everywhere. Okay. Yes. What else? And also make sure to initiate a message and a conversation when they do add. So this is a tip that a lot of people have missed and they're leaving money on the table. Mm. So especially if you have not met someone elsewhere, but they friend requested you on a platform like Facebook, Facebook automatically is trying to grow Messenger. So they open up a new Messenger thread in Facebook and they say, hey, you can now message and call each other on Facebook. Most people do nothing with that. They don't actually initiate a conversation. Well, I always recommend for the agents that work with us to initiate the conversation and say something simple like, hey, great to connect. Is there any particular reason you're reaching out right now? Mm. And this, it's a simple question to open the conversation. And it, does, it makes sense. You have on your profile, realtor, you know, uh, Colwell broker, and you have all over your, your Facebook profile that this is what you do. This person reached out to you, start a conversation. And of course, the question goes, do you know anyone who's buying or selling a home within the next six months or year? You know, you can pepper that in somewhere throughout the conversation, but really the first phase is building rapport, right? Before you can really nurture. So you friended them, but then you're asking them a question on, on messenger. As in this particular case, you. they yeah. would have friended me. They and friended I, you. and then I say, I respond with that. But even when I do friend them, say, I, I kind of see them just to get them to start talking. Now, what's the yes. question that you type in there again? Sure. Hey, great to connect. And then is there any particular reason why you're reaching out right now? Is there any reason why you're reaching out right now? And this is anybody that wants to connect with you anywhere. And yeah. then you're, and then you, you know, LinkedIn, whatever, and Instagram, whatever. And then you just let it sit. Yep. And that's and then, for an incoming and then for an outgoing. So say you send a friend request. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me stop you there. And then, and then with that, yeah, they're going to say what something that they need something or hey, I'm just, I'm just, you know, you're, we have mutual friends, whatever. And how do I relate that to selling them a piece of real estate? Yes. So what it does is it allows the exchange of energy to begin. It doesn't just leave it as friend request accepted. Now they're archived into my friend list forever. And maybe they'll see a post at some point in the future. Mm. Right. It initiates the because that's a of form energy. of like really light branding, guys. You got to think about this. Like, you know, the whole idea of light branding on or branding at all on on social media is a joke because the people have so many followers and they have so many friends that just you know, and they're scrolling right through it. And unless you're like running nude across a football field with six cops chasing you on every post that you do, they're just not going to see you. Right. right. So, so the answer is to communicate with them direct, right? Just 100%. like Jeffrey's saying, you know, a hundred percent. Get in an engaging conversation. Every single person, if it's some random from India that you know has no mutual friends, ask them the same question. Just get in that same habit of asking the same exact questions that every single person connects with you on all social media channels. Okay. Now let's let's flip the the switch. Let's say. You connect to them. You meet them somewhere. First of all, I want to talk about some specifics on, on, on getting this because I've, I've, I've heard agents talk about some roadblocks. Let's say their name is Nathan Smith and you type in Nathan Smith and there's 14 of them on Instagram, <laughs> right, that show up. What do you do? Right. So for Instagram specifically, I would actually go to Facebook, find them on Facebook and Instagram's typically linked and it's much easier to search for people on Facebook. So that's one tip you can. And then wait a minute. And then, and then they, then they, uh, once they're on your friends with them on Facebook, your Instagram will be linked. So, linked so they'll show up first. If you go and retry it, they'll show up first, right? Yes. And you can typically see either posts from Instagram or you can go in there about and see that their Instagram is linked to their Facebook and click the link from there. Okay. So, what else? So I want to talk about the mindset of- Wait a minute, platforms. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's, there, there's, there's more. There is more. You type in their email. You can, search, you can search people by email. Yes. 
Um, and uh, so, so if you get Nathan Smith's email, you can type in his email, Nathan Smith at yahoo.com. And that profile will show up on Facebook. Will it show up on the other ones too? So I am not sure if it shows up on Instagram, honestly, but it is a it great may. tactic. It to may on, on LinkedIn and also the cell number. You should try, you should try it all. Um, because, um, like uh, I know it works beyond a shadow of a doubt on, on, um, on Facebook. You can yes. type in someone's cell number on Facebook because they have to link their cell number. You can type in their, their email on Facebook because they have to link an email. And then providing they don't have four email accounts um, and they used a different one for Facebook, it's, it's going to hit. 100%. So with that being said, it's, it's super important to talk about the mindset of these because Facebook, they talk about Facebook being the town square of the world. What there's, do you mean? What's there's all, you there's mean? all kinds of people walking in and out. There's people you don't know. There's people you, you might know. You're grabbing lunch with them. But okay. there's a lot going on. Yep. They talk about Messenger like it is the living room conversation. Mm-hmm. Tribeofmillionaires.com. Guys, write that down. Rockstar Nation got a free special offer for you. Now, I've just written a book, and it's just been published. Co-authored it with David Osborne, who's been on this show multiple times. If you don't know David, he is one of the top execs at Keller Williams Real Estate. Was personally mentored for the last two decades by Gary Keller himself. And he's in all kinds of businesses. His bio and explanation and everything is in this book. But anyways, David and I got together. We decided to write a book. We called it Tribe of Millionaires. And I guarantee you, it's going to change your life. To find out more, just go to tribeofmillionaires.com. We're going to give it to you absolutely free. Only thing we ask in return is, of course, number one, you pay the shipping. Not a big deal. But number two, that you go on Amazon and write us a review. We're really looking to get an incredible amount of reviews. And because of that, we're giving this book away for free. Go to tribeofmillionaires.com today. Yeah, it's and like 90% open rate on Messenger, yes. right? And email has, like, if you can, if you can get a 10% 10, 10 open rate on emails you send, um, blanket emails that you send, you're doing great. Yes. Right now on Messenger, people are getting like 90% as the average, right? That's right. We, for, so for our lead nurture campaigns, we get 97% open rates on Messenger. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. So, so Messenger is the way to go, right? You try to, you should try to, I, I, I'm, I, I think LinkedIn is, is too spammed out, right? Like, like so much spam on LinkedIn. I wonder what the open rate is on LinkedIn. Do you know? I'm not sure what the exact open rate is on LinkedIn, but I know that if you send out tons of outgoing connection requests, only about, 20 to 25 percent get accepted so with that being said that's really the yeah, only way to, to message someone on linkedin anyway so you're throttled right there yeah no definitely uh, go through messenger and it has a separate app you know that that sends notifications just for the for the other person one of the challenges i have too on number one i have on linkedin is just too much right too many too much spam number two on Instagram, uh, it kind of gets pushed down. Like literally, I can look at Instagram four days in a row and not even notice I have a message in there. But mm -hmm. Messenger, you're gonna know right away um, yes. when you have a message when you have a message in there. So, so let's stay on track. So you now have connected to Nathan Smith. You met him at a party. What do I do from here to get him to use me as a real estate agent? Great question. So. Here's a couple of tactics that you can use. So first of all, invite him to like your Facebook business page for real estate. The reason nice. why is because you can retarget people that have liked your page. So that's number one. Okay. Number two is when you post some content, even of you and your family, you're spending family time, you're not doing real estate stuff. Yep. Pay to promote it. And what you can do is you can promote it and then retarget people who have watched a certain amount of the video. 
So you could think of it as digital farming. So for example, Mr. Nathan Smith, you add him as a friend on your personal Facebook profile. Well, what you can now do is post on your business profile, share it to your personal profile. And when Nathan Smith watches it, you can retarget him. You could also tag the person directly. I mean, slow in this it. down. So, what? First of all, first of all, how do I? You know, not not how do I pay, but when you say promote it, right? You're you're first of all, you're promoting it on your your real estate agent business page, right? Yes. You're paying, right? Okay, so you through certain demographics or whatever, you pay to promote that. You're not boosting it on your personal page because all boosting does, guys, is just kind of is going to the people that like all your stuff already anyways, right? It's not. And, and then what he's saying is now you, from the personal page, you are retargeting. Explain that to Nathan Smith. Explain oh, that. Okay. So number one, on your personal page, you can't run ads. So even though your personal page, Facebook page for this example, gives you a little bit extra reach is what it's called. Your post is shown to more people and you get some mm -hmm. more comments and likes right away. Yep. The long game, you're shooting yourself in the foot because it's, you can never run an ad to that. You, can never, you can't track any of the people that are watching that stuff. So I always teach my real estate clients, here is the posting syntax. Here's the, the list and the one, two, three of how you do it so that you maximize each post. You do a video or something along those lines. You okay. Post number one, business Facebook post page. That's, that's number two. To your business page. Okay. And then you click share and you share it to your personal page. Okay. Why do we do that? That's because it. when someone is scrolling on from their feed and they see you sharing your business's video. Well, now when they watch 10 or 15 seconds or a minute of that video, that, that interaction is being tracked by Facebook. And then you, you pay money page. then to retarget that person, yes. right? which means it just keeps going to them. They, see an, they keep seeing all your new videos as you post them because you know that they watched it, right? Yes. And I want to also clarify that. So retargeting is not only from a website view anymore, meaning you go to Expedia.com, you look at that, that hotel for you and your wife, and you almost check out, but you don't. You go back to social media. And what's right there? That, that hotel room, right? That's, that's website retargeting. Mm -hmm. But you can now retarget based on video view you can retarget based on engagement. So what I mean by that is if you create a three minute video, it's for a beautiful listing in your area. You had a drone go out and shoot this amazing, right? Like you were seeing this now, we're seeing more cinematic type of real estate listing videos. Well, if you now promote that video on Facebook with what's called a video view campaign, you can get a ton of views for nothing. You can get I, I got 20,000 views for my client for $100, right? Mm. So now what you can do with those 20,000 views is retarget only the people that watched more than 50% of the video. Yeah, I like that, right? Because that's, that's the thing when you worry about those views, you're like, what does that mean, right? Does that just mean somebody, you know, watched the first five seconds and then scrolled to the next thing, right? Which happens a lot, especially if you're watching from your phone, it's easy to scroll down videos. Right, absolutely. So you can eliminate all the people that only watch three seconds, all the people that only watch 10 seconds, and you can actually target the thousand people that watched more than 50% and then serve them a lead generation ad. Nice. Hey, you want to come to some open houses this weekend? Here's a list of them. Hey, do you want a list of properties in your area under a certain dollar amount? Right? So that's your retargeting based on intent. They're showing more intent by watching that video longer. I love it. And I think what Jeffrey's saying here, guys, is essentially all this energy and all this time that's being spent on picking up the phone, following up, texting, yes. you know, and all that stuff. He's saying, hey, don't do that. He says, he says you know, uh, I understand that they're not, they didn't reach out to you on Facebook. I understand that 
that you didn't find them on, they didn't contact you on social media, but that doesn't mean that you can't bring the entire communication process over to social media, right? You could bring it over to Facebook, let's say the easiest one to do and, um, and do this and just save so much more time and energy and have it be more effective, right? Because oh. it's doing while, while you're asleep, you don't know when the guy's on Facebook. Right. You nailed it. Yes. So you can supplement and exchange a lot of that energy that you're putting out into cold calling or calling expireds or door knocking and all this stuff. And you can actually create no like and trust within your sphere from social media if you're doing it right. And so you can really farm and you can create that affinity from people. So what I mean by that is you're building rapport, right? Like that's the whole first step of the sales process. You've got to build that connection. Well, the average online lead nowadays is 11 months out. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. 11 months out. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, and you know, 11 months. By the time you get a lead, it's 11 months out. I read a statistic this morning. It's funny. I read a statistic this morning. It says Zillow has 11, was it 11? I think it was 11 million um, no, 140 million, I believe subscribers, right? Every mm. month, I'm going to grab it. But, um, and, um, 140 million, I believe, but only, but only half a million are, uh, active, uh, only half a million people buy a house in a given month or in a, only half a million of them buy a house out of 140 million, which is like, you know, less than a half of 1%. So it's crazy. Um, what goes on, right? right. It's, it's crazy. So let me ask you this. Here's a cool question. Like, what do you think is, as far as lead follow-up, right? As far as lead follow-up process, it takes 11 months. What is dying and what is the future for it? Mm, great question. It's an age old sales mantra. The fortune is in the follow-up, right? So with that being said, what's dying? Email. What's wrong? What is email? Th think about it. How many hundreds or how many thousands or how many tens of thousands do consumers have that are that little badge on their phone of unread emails? I saw one yesterday, 17,000 unread emails. That's crazy. And Who does that? <laughs> right. How do you so, I mean, think? There, you there are jokes about it. Like a hoarder. <laughs> right there are jokes about it it's you're one or the other you, you're the mail app with no badge with like you're completely caught up or you have a hundred thousand unread emails so uh with that being said yes you can send closing docs through an email and people will open it but as far as nurturing as far as sending marketing out as far as keeping in touch and staying top of mind it's dying i mean it's really really is dying and so what is do you think new? one day, do you think one day, like, you know how you can airdrop photos? Yes. Do you think email will be airdropped one day where the only way you could get an email or, or, or a document that you want to send somebody is to send it through some sort of airdrop and, um, and then all other communication will be text, right? So that you won't even have email. Right. That's interesting. And long range airdrop. Right. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, I mean, more and more people I'm calling and their voicemail says, I, you know, I do not do voicemail. Please text me. Right. I can tell you, I've da my daughters are in their, their, their low twenties and, and they don't do email. Right. I send them an email. They might get it in like five days. They only do email if they have to check for a document that someone sent them that has to be downloaded or something. Yes. Right? So, so, you know, and I past just, past that as well, it's not only the millennials, it's not only daughters. I mean, everyone it, it emails. There's an inherent flaw. It's decentralized. You have Hotmail, you have Gmail, you have Yahoo, you have so many, and you can buy a list. I could buy a hundred thousand emails tomorrow and start spamming them. Yeah. It's unregulated, and because of that, the marketing channel has now declined and diminished in the eyes of the consumer. They don't value it anymore. They see it as a burden that they have to go check. Mm. In contrast, Facebook Messenger and text are much more protected. 
they're centralized. Yes, you can, you can buy a, a phone number list, but did you know that 80% of text messages are never sent to you? Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. That's a title of a comment that I got on my certified listing agent course from Rebus University. It's from Bill Reig. This is what Bill says. Bill says, looking to take your listing presentation to the next level? I've closed 100 appointments since I took Pat's certified listing agent course. Five appointments, five new clients, 60 days. Boom. Do the math. It's worth every single dollar. Thanks, Bill. But listen, guys, I am offering this to you if you haven't already taken it because so many brokers and teams make their agents take it before they do a single listing appointment. But if you haven't taken it, you can go to rebusuniversity.com and get it now. Now, here's the thing. For 30 days, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you that course. I'm going to give you the buyer agent course, which teaches you how to close every single series buyer that calls on the phone or emails. The certified team agent course is taught by Jeff Cohn, one of America's top agents on how to build a team from zero to hero to hundreds and hundreds of units every year, step by step. It's like a 12 hour course plus seven other courses. Yes, you heard that right. All for a measly 127 bucks a month. If you were to go to Rebus University and buy these courses individually, it costs you over $10,000. But today, if you go to futureofrealestatetraining.com, that's futureofrealestatetraining.com, you'll learn what Bill Reek did, which is how to close 100% of the listing points you go on. Quite impressive. And you'll learn all the other incredible details provided in the 11 five-star courses that are offered. Yeah, it's like all you can eat bizarre. You go in now and you pay 127 bucks a month. If you can eat all 11 courses in one month, that's all you pay is a buck 97. This is a bargain guys, get it now future of real estate training.com. Hey, real estate rock stars. This is Pat Hyben. And before we jump back into today's content, I want to tell you about an extraordinary offer from an extraordinary company. I'm talking about my Outdesk. If you haven't heard of my Outdesk, basically they are a virtual assistant company, a VA company that specializes in virtual assistants for real estate agents. Yeah, I'm talking about transaction coordinators, marketing assistants. I'm talking about ISAs, inside sales agents at Prospect, thousands and thousands of seller leads and buyer lead follow-ups. I mean, these guys are trained in this stuff specifically. You're not using a company that doesn't know or understand real estate sales. Four out of five of the top teams in the U.S. use my Outdesk for their virtual assistants. And because I know the owner, Daniel Ramsey, I've known him for over a decade, and I know how awesome and incredible this company is and how it saves agents thousands and thousands of dollars every single week and makes them thousands and thousands of more every single week. We are going to give you a $400 coupon off of your first month of a virtual assistant and give you a free book entitled scaling your business with virtual professionals. So you can like read it and look into it before you decide anything. It's called scaling your business with virtual professionals. And you can get it real easy. All you got to do is text the word HIBAN, H-I-B-A-N, to 31996. That's H-I-B-A-N to 31996. And download your free book, Scaling Your Business with Virtual Professionals. And don't forget to mention also that you get a $400 discount, which will give you a coupon for that when you download the book. Thank you, guys. And I hope you enjoy and make a ton of money using my Outdesk. No. What does that mean? That means that there are tons of Nigerian princes out there and all these offers that go straight into your spam folder and email that are going to your phone, but they never go through because they're marked as spam from the sender and the SMSs don't even go through. So SMSs, really, I didn't know that like text, like so, yeah. somebody's texting me and it, and it's blocked by who, by who Apple? Well, it's, it's blocked. Like, do, do you get text on your, provider? 
Yeah, exactly. Do you get texts on your phone now and it says, um, I, I just had one this morning, the first text from someone that has a reputable number and it's like, um, you know, do you want to mark this as spam or once you reply yeah. and it confirms it? It says maybe Russ. Like it, 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 like the iPhone will actually yeah, say yeah. maybe Russ and confirm or do you want to mark it as spam? Right, so exactly. Says, like they and, try to figure out, Siri somehow tries to figure out what the dude's name is or, or how they might be related if they're in your contacts or if they're – actually, if you're in your contacts, it's going to show their name. But if they're not, and somehow it figures out who they may be from something and it'll say maybe Russ. <laughs> right. So – to answer your question, Pat, what's dead and then what's new? Well, what it, everything is going towards is mobile first. I'm talking SMS. I'm talking messaging apps. If it's built for the phone and it's secure and centralized, that's what people want. People are shifting more towards encrypted data sources, stuff that like WhatsApp, for example, has encrypted messaging, which has bank grade encryption for an average message. And people actually value that highly. It's one of the highest used. Why? Why would I care if world? I'm not a drug smuggler, you know, you know, trying to hide money, you know, what, why would I give a shit if it was encrypted or not? I never understood that. Yeah. So encryption, it's, it, it saves from obviously hackers and people getting in to your, your messaging thread. Uh, people share sensitive information like, not only photos, but passwords and all these different aspects of media, family photos. So the more secure it is, the safer people are going to feel and the more user adoption there will be. Okay. So, so email, you know, anything that requires a laptop sounds like, you know, all that's dead, dying, right? Jeffrey's saying, right? I yes. agree. Uh, what's two years from now? What's the world going to look like communication wise for agents trying to follow up with buyers and sellers? Like, like wh so wh where's it going to be where people are like, damn, I wish I tried that today. Now this guy and this girl started this two years ago and it's, and, and they're killing it. You yes. know what I mean? It's kind of like the first people that started getting all the Zillow reviews right, right. before anybody was even getting any. Right. So, Yes. So both my parents were entrepreneurs and when they were growing their business in the early 2000s, everyone was saying, why don't you have a website? That's how it's going to be with Messenger in mm -hmm. a couple of years. You don't how have, come, a, how come you you don't have a Facebook Messenger like experience with your business page? What, what's, why don't you have a Facebook Messenger either a real estate chatbot or something going on there. I, I messaged your business three weeks ago on Facebook. You didn't get back to me. I, so, go into, <laughs> I go into top brokers, real estate pages on Facebook that they've had up as a Facebook business page for a couple of years. And there'll be someone from six months ago that said, Hey, I, I want you to sell my house on 2300 San Alijo Avenue. No response. Yeah. I have that problem <laughs> myself to be honest with you. Mine stems from having too many damn pages. You know what I mean? Like yes. if I only had one page, I could handle it, but, but, but Facebook is funny with the way that they tell you, you have messages like messenger is easy, but when it comes to messages, um, uh, uh, verifying your uh, tags, things like that, there's a lot of that stuff. I don't see until like one day I'm like, Oh, what? Oh, I, have, I have three things that need to be very, you know, do you know what I'm talking about? Where yes. it's easy to get lost. Yes. So the question is, wouldn't it be nice if there was something that could help you to nurture and get back to those people and turn them into a lead? Integrate yeah, them right. with your CRM. Bam, like that lead it, six months ago that said, hey, I want you to I want to sell talk my about house. listing my house. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if there's something that went, bam, hey, this is the best number to call us. And it immediately integrates them with your CRM so it comes to the top of where you're looking every day. Right. Immediately. No, I agree. I agree. And and it says, you know, one thing that listeners can do um, to tie into what you're saying, the future is going to lie, um, is consciously, com consciously go to your messenger over your email. Like, if you're like, oh man, I got to email three people today, consciously don't go to your email. Consciously, Find them on Facebook. The way you find them on Facebook, you cut and paste their email into Facebook. Like I said, 
like them, uh, friend them, and you can send them a, a you can send them a, a messenger without even being friends with them. Again, it's um, you got to make sure that they're getting it because if you're not friends with them, it goes to a different folder. Yes, you know, you know what I mean, which is scary. Um, and I think that that's why people are scared to do it. Uh, but maybe you could create some system where if they don't reply on Messenger, you follow up with uh, email or text the next day. But basically, my point is to get in the habit of just being on Messenger all the time so that um, you start building that muscle in, in how you communicate and you start building your, your Messenger database and, and, and your real friends that you're communicating with. 100%. Plus, Messenger supports rich text. So what I mean by that is we have SMS, that was first, right? When we had flip phones, mm -hmm. then MMS came out. Cool, we can send a photo, we can send videos. Well, now what's next is RCS and the service providers for texting have agreed to all go to RCS as a uniform. Well, what is it? What is I'll, RCS? I'll, I'll tell you about it. I'll okay. tell you about it. But in in the next 12 months. So everyone's going to have RCS. And what that means is you can have more of an app like experience. You know how iOS, you can send a, a voice memo to someone, you can send a little video yeah. chat, you can interact with, it's more like an app. That's what all text hmm. providers have agreed to start to roll out because they all have to be on the same page about it. So Messenger offers RCS right now. And you can, you can send someone a 10 second video right when you connect with them. That's much more personal. And it's going to actually show your emotion in your face and your voice and your tone. Versus shooting a video and attaching it. You can, you could like just hit a button and it starts the video. Yeah. Bam. And then right it there. attaches it. Right. And then, it, then it's, it's already natively. part of natively. It's part of it. And you could probably go a lot longer because a lot of times, you know, yep. you shoot some video and it's three minutes long and then you try to send it to somebody and it either takes a million years to get through or it just kicks it back and says your video is too long. Right. And so for this, you can, I mean, already in Messenger, you can send 25 megabyte um, attachments. And pretty soon, once 5G rolls out, which is the new data network that is really throttling, 4G is throttling everything right now. Once 5G comes out, our data transfer speeds walking around when you're not on Wi-Fi are going to exponentially increase. And you could probably send hundred megabyte, half gigabyte, crazy files. So that's, that's where I just think that the, you know, this whole big file thing of sending via email, you know, I don't know if 5g is going to do it, but six or seven G may you like, <laughs> like where you're just going to, there's just not going to not, not have email. So I think it, I think you got a great point and it's something that real estate agents should start, try to start weaning themselves off of email as much as possible. Yes. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's a time suck and it's really inefficient. One of my core beliefs is that when something is no longer working, there has to be a better way. I'm an innovator. And so that's what we've discovered over the last 18 months is there is a better way. And here it is. And not only is it here now, it's also growing massively. It's it, as a marketing channel and as a user base, Messenger and, and SMS, they're growing. So I know a lot of people that, that have... You know, I've, I've seen some extreme things lately. Uh, one, one thing, I, I called a guy. He's like, I don't take voicemail and I don't do email. Only way to find me is send me a Voxer, <laughs> um, which I found was interesting. Um, and I voxed him and he voxed me back. And we had one-way communication going back and forth. Um, and I had a... Another situation, I just had it off the top of my head, um, where, um, what was it? I can't remember what it was, but it was something, it, um, it was something, uh, Allie, cut that out. Just say, um, and let, let me change this. So I, I had a really cool, interesting situation recently. I tried to reach out to a guy and he said, I, I don't do email. I don't do voicemail. I only do Voxer. And I had to Voxer him back and forth, uh, no a one-way conversation. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. And that's an extreme case, but that's something that a lot of people are adopting. It's like you said on the, on the voicemail, you call someone, Hey, for a quick response, shoot me a text. 
happens yeah. all the time. You know, you know, another thing too, um, actually is people are actually shutting down their email accounts and opening up new ones yep. because they can't get rid of the spam. They unsubscribe and they unsubscribe and somehow it's so powerful that it just keeps coming through or ignored or it takes way too long because they have way too many, you know, spam emails. So they're just like, hey, if you love me, if you know me, this email is shut down. Here's right. my new email. Right. Absolutely. And it's, isn't that an extreme to have to go to nowadays where you unsubscribe from an email list three times and they still email you? So that's just, once again, it's an inherent problem with the platform. And because of that, open rates have steadily declined and user adoption has steadily shifted more towards these new messaging type of applications that are more secure. If you text stop to a business on Facebook in Messenger, you unsubscribe and you unsubscribe for good. Like it's done. <laughs> they stop sending you messages. They, yeah, it's, they actually have a button because I did it to two people today. Actually, yeah. we're, we're up in the top right corner. You could do it and, you, and it says... Um, stop receiving messages from this person which is good works. that's yeah. a good thing that saves marketers from themselves because what they do is they find out a new channel that's working and they flood it and ruin it so mm. because facebook and because sms is more centrally regulated it's a good thing because user adoption will remain high and growing rather than people getting upset that oh man i used to like this now i'm getting spammed right yeah absolutely Crazy business. Yeah, that's great. So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Broger is too long to put in there. I'm going to just put hybendigital.com backslash Broger. And here's an easy way. It's like Frogger, but with a B. It's like Frogger, the game, two Gs, F Frogger, F-R-O-G-G-E-R, but it's B-R-O-G-G-E-R. Hybendigital.com backslash Broger, B-R-O-G-G-E-R. And uh, uh, this will be in there in the show notes. All of Jeffrey's information will be in the show notes. Uh, Jeff, this, this has been a blast, buddy. If I'm ever up in your neck of the woods, I'll definitely look you up and we'll get together and break some bread. Thanks, Pat. I really appreciate you having me on. And I hope that we offered some value to the listeners. So that's what it's all about. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Have a great day. I want you to think about the word toolbox. What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient and the thing is it's absolutely free all you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999 that's toolbox 444-999 do it now Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, 
the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a, a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day, and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.